Hi, I'm Harry Smith and welcome to Eye to Eye. Katie Couric is on assignment. President Bush is feeling heat from both sides of the aisle over the U.S. commitment to Iraq. Cheryl Atkinson talked to Republican Senator Olympia Snow about what progress lawmakers expect to see in the coming months. What is it pushing the president into possibly changing the strategies? Is it the pressure from Democrats or pressure from fellow Republicans? I think it's a combination, but most certainly, uh, you know, he has to take notice of the concern within his own party. I think any time the president, you know, is hearing firsthand about the fundamental concerns and opposition uh, to the president's strategy regarding Iraq, he has to hear uh, those concerns, but more importantly, he has to act upon them. And I, and I think he's beginning to recognize uh, that time is running short, that people will cast different votes uh, separate and apart from the, uh, supporting the president's plan, and rightfully so, uh, because we do have to change the course uh, in Iraq. Based on my uh, recent trip, uh, I can tell you uh, things have not markedly improved. They have in places like Ramadi, which I think is a, a real success story in fighting al-Qaeda because of the joint cooperation that exists between the Iraqis, the Americans, and the tribal sheikhs. And so again, it demonstrates that Iraqis can do it if they put their minds to it. So it's the political leadership that has to make the changes, and they have to ha demonstrate the political resolve and the willingness uh, to compromise uh, so that they can lead their country towards a stable united Iraq and to bring in the minority populations. Otherwise, I think that uh, obviously it's going to disintegrate. Can you give a brief synopsis for a layperson of what your bill calls for? Yes, it, it basically calls for uh, the Iraqis would have to achieve uh, six benchmarks uh, that disarms the militias, sets up, establishes provincial elections, um, it requires oil revenue sharing distribution programs so that all, everybody benefits in Iraq from the resources of, of the oil. It also amends the Constitution to address the minority population's concerns. Um, and it also has a debathification program that, again, you know, allow those who are members of Ba'ath Party but did not commit any crimes uh, to be able to have government positions and to re-enter the political you know, landscape uh, of Iraq. If the final details are yet to come as to what bill really passes and goes to the president, what do you think are the critical components it really must have? I think certainly these benchmarks, because I think by all accounts and by all standards, these are the benchmarks that give a broad indication as to whether or not uh, the, pol the political leadership in Iraq is interested in true national uh, reconciliation. The whole purpose of the military surge that we would deploy an additional 30,000 troops was so that the political leadership, the political leaders in Iraq, would make the political concessions that are necessary to unite Iraq. And that's what they have not accomplished. So that's why they only have several months, because General Petraeus has said he's coming back in September, and he is going to give us his candid assessment as to whether or not the security plan is working. So that means that if the political surge isn't working in, in, in tandem with the military surge, uh, then that will have failed because the political surge is what it's all about. No military solution can accomplish the goals in Iraq without the political commitment of its leadership. And that's what's lacking at this moment in time. Does there have to be a provision in there that says what happens if these benchmarks aren't met? Uh, absolutely, I think it does. I mean, I think it's imperative because otherwise we're not leveraging, you know, I think uh, the pressure on the Iraqis to do what they need to do and what they themselves admitted they needed to do as well.